Hey everyone, happy June and welcome to another episode of the Assassin's Read Book Club. Today we'll be discussing the first volume of the Templars comics entitled Black Cross. Uh, just a quick note before we get started that the next assignment is going to be volume 2 of the Templars comic series which is called Cross of War, so we'll just be continuing straight through that. Uh, as always, we held a giveaway for the book of the month, so congratulations to the winners. And if you would like to pick up your own copy, you can use the Amazon affiliate link in the video description. So why don't we jump right into it. Uh, things I liked about Black Cross. Uh, I really, really like the art style, actually. I thought it was really... Uh, I, I loved how gritty and more realistic it felt, especially compared to the Assassin series. I like both. Uh, I just think it provides a nice contrast, uh, and it kind of fits the, the tone of this book more. Um, and so the art style combined with the setting, uh, time period, and everything, I think gave everything almost like this noirish look that I just thought was really cool. Um, I really, really enjoyed the art style in this book. Uh, the other thing I really like, just kind of in broad strokes, is the Templar story, like the historical aspect. Uh, I thought it was really cool to see more of the inner workings of the Templars. I mentioned this when I talked about Assassin's Creed Heresy as well. Uh, in the Assassin's Creed book club. Uh, I think it was really cool to see more of the Templars and I think the position of Black Cross itself as kind of like this enforcer within the organization uh, to root out corruption uh, makes a lot of sense uh, in my opinion just because uh, you know the Templars historically have been about uh, gaining a lot of power and wealth you know, the wealth kind of being a means to power, because they need that power and control in order to uh, enforce their philosophy, right? To be able to control people and guide humanity towards uh, what they think is the right path, right? And so, obviously, when you're seeking a lot of uh, power and uh, control and wealth, that's very easily corruptible, thing and you can imagine along the way that a lot of Templars kind of lost their way so to speak uh, when they encounter all this power and wealth and so I think I, I so I really like that idea that they had this way of kind of policing themselves internally to kind of keep their philosophy pure because it's so easily corruptible when you're in pursuit of it so those are the things that I really liked um, things that I'm a little more mixed on um, the modern day so this is a very different kind of uh, modern day thing where they didn't even bring it in until the very, very end of it, right? And for a while I was wondering if they even had it at all. Uh, and so I like it because it was actually kind of a nice change of pace to be able to just stick with the historical story like all the way through. You know, we're kind of used to having to jump between the historical and modern day and it was actually kind of nice. I don't think I'd want it all the time, but it was actually... Uh, a nice change of pace in this case to just kind of stick with the historical story until it was finished. Um, at the same time, uh, the thing I kind of dislike about it is it's almost like Assassin's Creed. It, it kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed Unity in the sense that it was like, oh, we're going to pursue this thing in the past and, oh, it's not what we thought it was or it doesn't, basically it doesn't matter, right? Like that was the big complaint about Unity's uh, modern day portion. And you could kind of say the same thing about uh, the modern day uh, here in this book where Otto Berg is like, oh, this isn't the Kuinor at all. This is just some guy's finger. <laughs> so, um, but it does introduce the concept of Black Cross and we'll get to a little bit more about the modern day in a bit. Um, the other thing I'm a little mixed about is the lack of assassins, uh, which was kind of surprising, but I guess the series is called Templars. It's not necessarily promising any assassins, right? <laughs> so um, I think it was nice in that it kept the focus on kind of the internal politics and squabbles of the Templars, and it was nicely focused on that. But at the same time, it's a little strange not to have the contrasting philosophies. Well, I guess the philosophies are kind of there a little bit, but uh, not really. Like, I'm just used to having the, uh, I'm used to these stories having an assassin Templar conflict kind of at the core of it, even if it's not like literally an assassin fighting a Templar. But I thought it was, I thought it was okay for this. I wouldn't, Obviously, this is another thing where I wouldn't want it to be the case for every story in the Assassin's Creed universe. 
but I think it worked out fairly well uh, overall for this. But I'm still a little mixed on it. Okay, so dislikes. There's only one kind of dislike I really had about this. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, but the big dislike I have has to do with the Black Cross lineage. Um, so at the very end, Otto Berg uh, kind of, like in the last panels, talks about how the Black Cross role and title was passed down from generation to generation of the Bolden family, basically. And he's like, oh, we might need another Black Cross. And instead of being like, let's take our most trusted agent or like our... Like, uh, I, sorry, let me back up a bit. I just don't understand why the Black Cross position is tied to a family. And that kind of goes against kind of the idea the philosophy of the Templars in general, right? Like I've talked to Darby in the past and we talked about how like the Templars are kind of like uh, almost like this meritocracy where it's very explicitly not about like, uh, you know, what your parents did or like you inheriting things from them or whatever. Like, in fact, the whole Black Cross, uh, the, the whole uh, impetus for Black Cross's actions in this in this comic is based on this idea that this uh, guy that he is trying to help out should not suffer from the sins of his father, right? Like that he deserves his own chance to prove himself. And so he's trying to make things right with him uh, and the Templars. And so the Templars, like I said, have always kind of functioned as a meritocracy. So it doesn't really make sense that the Black Cross position can only be held by members of this family. It's a really strange concept. And it kind of comes out of nowhere. And like personally, like as the trusted agent slash enforcer of the Templars, I don't see why it just can't be Otso Berg. Like it really should just be their most um, skilled and trusted agent at the time, no matter what family they come from. And so I thought that kind of came out of left field for me felt really weird in the context of everything because everything else in this book sticks pretty closely like does a really good job of sticking closely to the established lore and kind of uh, everything that's going on uh, everything that goes on in the AC universe so and so that, that that was kind of weird and that's probably the only real dislike I had for the story all right, now before we wrap up, we'll just end with a quick comment on last week's discussion, which was about Assassin's Creed Volume 2 in the comics, Setting Sun. We have another comment here from Hugh Pritchard, who says, I really like the historical setting, as it was one often not often explored in pop culture, so it was popular culture, sorry. So it was a lot more original. I, like the re I particularly like the relationship between Kila and Don Pardo. I like that one of them was a serious driven character with a clear goal, whereas the other was a big drunk teddy bear holding them back, and who showed his true colors in the end. This combined with the lighter, more colorful art style made it almost feel like a Disney animated movie, but with the grit, added grit and violence of Assassin's Creed. So not a whole lot from me on this end to add to this, just that I totally agree. And um, those are definitely kind of highlights. And it's definitely, you can definitely see the, the nice contrast in art styles and tone, um, you know, between what he describes uh, from the last comics we read and uh, the really kind of realist, more realistic and gritty art style of, of the Templars comics, which I really enjoyed. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Assassin's Read. Let me know what you all thought of Black Cross in the video, in the video comments below. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Uh, what did you like and dislike? And are you excited to see more with Cross of War, which is our next assignment? Don't forget to pick up a copy and I'll see you all on July 1st and in between you'll see some E3 videos from me. I'll be at E3 again, doing my usual, usual coverage. So yeah, that's gonna be exciting. All right, see y'all later, bye.